let's talk about Carl Icahn and Chesapeake yep. Energy. I mean, this company has just been battered and battered. A lot of mm. it's self-inflicted, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is exactly does he want? Does he have a point? He has a point. I mean, what he wants is uh, a couple of directors put on the board uh, and then for another couple of directors who are under the control of another major shareholder mm -hmm. like Southeastern Asset Management. Uh, he definitely has a point. I mean, he says, you know, this company uh, suffers poor governance. It's, uh, it's uh, taken the wrong strategy, which has led it to become very over leveraged. Um, I guess the point for me, though, is that this isn't the first time we've been here with Carl Icahn exactly. and, and Chesapeake. And, you know, he was he came into the stock in a big way in um, uh, in late 2010. Uh, he had similar discussions. He actually seems to have forced some kind of change of strategy at that point, because that's when Chesapeake said it was going to adopt some some targets for cutting its debt. Um, but, you know, you fast forward to Make now. Make those? Do those? Uh, well, did those ever happen? Th th well, here's the thing. They did actually manage to make some progress in terms of cutting their, mm -hmm. their balance sheet debt. Um, I would argue that their off-balance sheet obligations have <laughs> Got a lot swelled worse. in that yeah. time. So now let's, you're, uh, you're really not that much let's better Let's focus off. on the letter he wrote. Yeah. He wrote a pretty long letter, it yeah. seemed to me, which got a very curt response from the board, right? Yeah. Let's take a look at some of the letter here. You can mm -hmm. see a, a quote out of it here. You know, yeah. what is important is pernicious funding gap, which we believe this board has created, must be filled. So he's obviously taken some shots at the board here. Not that they're undeserved, but he's taken some shots at the board. The board yeah. is not happy with it. Right, exactly. I mean, well, essentially what he's saying is that this company has great assets, but it has adopted a very, very aggressive strategy. It's mainly to try and turn itself into more of an oil company, but it is massively outspending what it's bringing in the mm -hmm. door in terms of cash flow. And this is putting pressure on its credit rate. Uh, it's uh, it's causing some to question really whether Chesapeake will be able to to fill these huge funding gaps it has this year and next. But again, I would I would go back and say you know I can remember writing articles around the time uh, Mr. Icon first came into Chesapeake. All these issues were were there. Back then, in exactly. fact, he even he acknowledges that in the letter. He says, you know, even back then, I identified problems with the board, and that's why I sold out. Yeah. Now, at that point, he'd already made a good 40% or more on, on the stock that he Not bought, a bad so it wasn't a bad well, return. Let's focus here real quickly on the response from Chesapeake, from mm -hmm. the board. I think we're going to pull up something here. He says, yeah, look, we share Mr. Icon's belief that yeah. Chesapeake shares are substantially undervalued by the market well, today. This, again, yeah, I mean, whatever. This, is, this is more of the same you know, from Chesapeake. I mean, every Chesapeake analyst presentation, there's a slide which says, you know, this company should be worth, you know, at least double right. what is being paid for in the market. I mean, the, the response I would give to that is uh, Chesapeake clearly does have some great assets. But if it was really that cheap, Someone would have come and bought it. It seems to me that the, Carl Icahn, it's, he's, look, he's a big name. He gets mm -hmm. the story right. Yeah. But he's really kind of a sideline. I mean, the real issue is Aubrey McClendon, it's, right? I mean, right. It's, it's it, whether it, there is proper oversight of the strategy that's being put forward and executed. It seems to me that the, whole, the focus really comes down to the CEO of this company. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess uh, from, from uh, Carl Icahn's perspective, the way you gain leverage over the CEO is to take control of the board. Right. And, you know, the, certainly there is a view out there. And, and certain other shareholders have, have started to pipe up and say, you know, this board needs to be more active. It needs to be putting in greater oversight of the way this company is going. Um, but again, I would come back and I would say, you know, these issues have all been out there for a couple of years. I think it's become more acute now simply because of where gas prices have gone. And so people are beginning to wonder, you know, can this company really make its numbers? Can it make the strategy work? Is something fundamental needed in order to change direction? Whether Carl Icahn will make much of a difference, I don't know. I mean, it may be that he helps to, you know, stiffen the spine of some Correct. other shareholders and corral a, a group together to, to force some change. But How strong is McClendon's position right now? It's it's very strong, I would yeah. say. I mean, it's 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 Still, not as despite yeah, it's, scandalous. So well, and all well that, it's you know. not as strong as it was. But um, you know, the funny thing is, you go back to two thousand and eight when you had the whole uh, uproar about the board allowing the company to buy his map collection right. and the huge bonus that was awarded. I mean, like I say, these issues have been out there. But you know, Aubrey McClendon is the co-founder. He's been there since the start. And, uh, you know, those were pretty glaring examples of, of governance failings, and they didn't really touch him. It, it yeah. may be that a low gas price is the final thing that, that helps to, um, that helps to, uh, to force some well, change on him, but... We have to leave it there.